In this video, we're going to take a look at doing something a little differently. And as you can see from this shape, I can see an overall triangle that's going out of here. And if you know anything about triangles is that if we have an equilateral triangle, which means all the sides are the same and all the interior angles have to be the same. So kind of using that method, you know that all the sums of the angle inside of a rectangle have to equal 180. And if we do a little simple math, 180 divided by 3 should give us 60. So that tells me that this angle here is at 60 degrees. So that gives me my equilateral overall. The next thing I have to figure out is, what angle is this line at? And this one as well. Well, it gives me these 245s. So that's going to be a huge benefit of me creating this, is that I can start off with an equilateral triangle and create the rest of this. One other thing to note is that when we're defining things in AutoCAD, especially with polygons, we can't really tell you the sides of it. So I have another method that I like to use, and I'm going to show you that in this example. Let's go ahead and take a look at the intro and get back into it. Okay, so as I told you that we have our 60 degrees, we do have our 45 degrees, which means that that's a 15 from underneath those. Let's go ahead and switch to AutoCAD and start kind of constructing this and I'll give you some of my methods of creating this a little bit quickly. So some of the things I first like to do before I start doing anything in AutoCAD is let's go ahead and set up our AutoCAD. I usually turn the grid off since I don't need that. And in this case, I am gonna use polar tracking and that's gonna be one of the methods I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna go ahead and set that to the 15, 30, 45, 60 degrees, all right? And that should be all the things that I need to go ahead and construct this. So let's go ahead and start with a polygon. Remember, you can just simply, while you're in the graphics area, type in P-O-L, or if you're looking for the actual polygon command, it's gonna be up here, located either underneath the rectangle or have polygon. All right, so now it's gonna firstly ask how many sides we wanna create, and we're creating a triangle, so that's gonna be three sides. Next, I need to define where the center is, and then I have to tell it either inscribed or circumscribed. Really doesn't matter, which method you're gonna use here, but I'm just gonna use the inscribe method since that'll give me where my endpoints are. All right, so now I can see that the polygon is starting to be constructed. So once I get it vertical, I'm just gonna left click. Doesn't matter the size at this point. We do have some dimensions that we're gonna control this with, but for right now, I'm just gonna construct a simple triangle. Now, in order to get that to the right size, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the scale command. So I'm gonna to go to scale, I'm going to select my triangle that I created. Once I hit the enter button, it's asking me, where's your base point? Well, I'm going to, I know this thing is going to blow up and go kind of, you know, wild over the screen. It's going to get extremely large. So I'm going to select this end point or intersection that's going to be my base point. Next, it's going to ask me, what's the scale factor? Now, this is that important thing that I'm going to do. I could figure that out mathematically, but why do that when AutoCAD can do it a lot quicker for us? So go ahead and select the word reference. And then it says, give me a length or define a length. So I know that the length from here to here has to be a certain number. That number according to this document is 174. And that 174 applies in three different places. So that was also one of those things that helped me determine that this indeed was an equilateral triangle. So now that I have that length, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell AutoCAD in so many words that I'm going to go from this point here to this point needs to be this number. And that's the secret. So back in AutoCAD, it said, hey, all right, you picked those two points. Now give me a length. So that's what it's asking for right now. Well, as you remember from the drawing, the length of that is 174. And once I hit enter, this triangle is going to zoom up or, or scale up to that size. All right, let's kind of zoom out of that a little bit. And then we can go ahead and go put our circles on the end, on the midpoints on the inside of this. And I kind of got that from just doing a little simple math. We know that these radii are sitting at the center of these lines, or the midpoints, I should say, of these lines, because half of this number has to equal to 87. And then it does. So if you double 87, it should give you 174, or if you take 174 in half. 
So that's what we're going to use just to place these at the midpoint and we don't have to deal with any kind of special math or things of that nature. We already have an O-snap setting at that location. Okay, so I'm just going to verify that midpoint is turned on and I'm doing that by selecting a fly up here and I do have a check beside midpoint. All right, so next I'm just going to go ahead and create a circle with a center radius. I'm going to place it at this midpoint and I always like to pull my circle out just to get a little preview of it and the radius will be 24. Now I can do that also again. I'm just going to do that here. And it's the exact same size circle as the last one, so it has a radius of 24. All right, so I have those two circles, which are no problem. The tougher one is going to be the one at the bottom, and it's really not that tough. We just got to do a little extra constructing first. I start with the line command. I select this endpoint, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and I'm going to touch this intersection here at the top. So when I come straight down, I can get my polar tracking off of that and it seemed not to snap to it yet. Hold on, I'm just going to touch it again. And let me verify that my O-snap tracking is turned on. And I did that by just hitting F11. And now I see that it is turned on. I'm going to try that one more time. And if it don't work, as my endpoint, great. So as I come down, you'll see that that 15 degrees is the one that I want. And it's intersecting with that endpoint. I'll do a left click here. And then I'll come and left click at this endpoint. Then go ahead and hit escape. Go back and draw your circle center radius at this endpoint, end point, and then make that one 24. All right, next step here is I'm gonna select my triangle that I created here, and I'll use the explode command. Let's go ahead and erase this bottom line. So I'm just gonna select it and delete it. And then the last step here I need to do is trim. So I'll go to trim. And I'm just going to start trimming off these outside portions and the inside right here, the inside line. So outside of that circle, inside of the line, outside of this circle, and these two points. All right, and that should be all for this one. And I think I satisfied everything that I needed to on this one. So just remember, the key to this one is to do the scale and use a reference. It's a really useful tool when you're trying to construct something and you can't use something traditionally to construct that. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this video and can't wait to show you something new in the next one. Have a good day.